Hey there, ready to dive into something fascinating. You've sent us a bunch of stuff about this cursor AI, and honestly, it's pretty mind-blowing. We're talking AI that writes your code, designs interfaces, like a tech assistant on steroids. It is exciting stuff, right? And the really interesting part is how it's not just like making things faster, but changing how we even work with tech. So much to unpack. Maybe we start with where it all began, uh -huh. Anyosphere, right? They had this crazy goal, build a tool to write all the world's software, ambitious much. Indeed. And they got serious funding from the OpenAI Startup Fund. So clearly someone believes in the potential. What they've essentially done is taken a familiar code editor, Visual Studio Code. Are you familiar with that all? I've heard of it, yeah. So they took that and basically injected it with some serious AI power. We're talking OpenAI's ChatGPT and Claude. So smart, using what's already out there. Mm. But what makes it so different? We've already got code completion tools, right? Mm. This is way beyond that. Cursor AI uses those advanced AI models, but it understands the context of your code, gives you suggestions to actually make it better, not just finish a line. The bug detection alone, game changer. Okay, now you've got my attention. But it's not just for the hardcore coders, right? Mm -hmm. Something about democratizing software development. Exactly, that's one of the most powerful things here. It lowers the bar for entry into coding. Imagine just describing what you want in plain English and the AI turns it into code. Wow, that's huge. You mentioned how it impacts user interfaces too. I get the coding side, but how does that change what I actually see on the screen? Think of it this way by making the whole backend development smoother. Cursor AI frees up designers to really focus on the user experience. It can automate those repetitive UI tasks, make sure everything's consistent across an app, even suggest design elements based on what works best. So no more of those, wait, why doesn't this button work moments? Potentially, yes. Although, gotta remember, it's a tool. How good the UI is still depends on the people using it and how well they implement it. Makes sense. But about that implementation, I did see some worries about the downsides. Like, what if developers rely on AI too much? Do they forget how to think for themselves? Valid concern. Any powerful tool, there's a risk of overdependence. The key is using AI to enhance human skills, not replace them. We still need critical thinking, problem solving, especially when things go wrong, which they will. Because AI isn't perfect. Exactly. With all this potential, let's get into it. What's the state of cursor AI right now? Where is it being used? Who's getting the most out of it? Well, it's still pretty new, as you can imagine, but it's gaining traction, especially with a certain type of user. Okay, spill it. Who's loving Cursor AI? Right now, it seems to be independent developers and those newer to coding. It's that user-friendly approach and how it simplifies things that are usually complex that's appealing. Like having a coding buddy who's always there to help, especially when you're starting out and feeling lost. It's that user-friendly approach and how it simplifies things that are usually complex. It's appealing. Like having a coding buddy who's always there to help, especially when you're starting out and feeling lost. Right. Makes sense. And it's built on Visual Studio Code, which a lot of developers already use. So it's probably an easy switch for them. Mm -hmm. So lots of indie developers, people new to coding. Huh. Are any big companies using Cursor AI yet? It hasn't taken over the corporate world yet or anything, but I have heard some whispers. Yeah. Engineers at some big companies like Samsung, Shopify, even MidJourney, they're at least checking it out. Interesting. Makes you wonder if they're using it for those crazy AI image generators they're building. That'd be something. Could be, for sure. But the fact that those big names are even a little interested means Cursor AI might be about to hit the mainstream. Lots of buzz, lots of potential, but still early days. What's the general feeling in the tech world, people optimistic about its future? It's a mixed bag, really. Like with anything new in tech, there's definitely a lot of excitement, people calling it a game changer, a revolution. But, um, you know, there are valid concerns, too. Yeah, I bet. What are people worried about? Some developers, especially the really experienced ones, worry about relying on AI too much. Could make people worse at the fundamental skills of coding, at problem solving. That's the argument. That makes sense. Like relying on GPS too much, eventually you can't read a map anymore. Exactly. Lots to consider. Okay, so we've covered the backstory, where things are now, and some potential issues. But what are the people actually using Cursor AI? What are they saying? Any success stories? Oh, absolutely. And some are really incredible. There's this one guy, Henrik Nyberg. Okay, and is he a big name? Someone we should know. Oh, yeah, he's a big deal in agile software development. So a pro, not just someone new to this. Right. So Henrik... He decided to really integrate Cursor AI into his work, and the results, they've been really impressive. 
He's said himself that it's made him way more productive, coding faster and more efficiently than he ever could before. So what's the magic here? Is it just cursor AI spitting out code on command? No, no, it's way more than that. He found that the really amazing thing is how well cursor AI understands what he wants to do. He can literally describe it, just normal English, and it gets turned into code. Clean, efficient code. Almost like having a like an AI partner who can anticipate what he needs, make suggestions. Wow, that's next level. I can see how that saves tons of time, especially for those repetitive coding tasks or when you've got this huge, complex project. Absolutely. And it's not even just the speed. It's like freeing up your brain. With Cursor AI doing the more tedious stuff, developers like Henrik can focus on the more creative parts of their work, the strategy. More brain power for the big picture. I like it. Yep. But i got to ask about the elephant in the room, jobs. Is Cursor AI going to take them away mm -hmm. or create new ones? Million dollar question, right? And the answer, as with most things AI, it's complicated, not a simple yes or no. Okay, so walk us through it. What are we looking at, good and bad, economically speaking? Let's start with the potential downsides. No denying it, as AI like this gets better, some software development jobs might disappear. Especially those entry-level jobs, yeah. or the ones that are the same tasks over and over. Exactly. If an AI can be told, do this repetitive thing, and it does it, well, that human job's at risk. Something we got to be aware of individually and as a society. For sure. But what about the other side? Any potential benefits? Oh, tons. For one, by making development faster and more efficient, Cursor AI could really cut down on costs. That's huge, especially for startups, smaller companies, who don't have endless money to throw at building software. Right, it levels the playing field a bit, lets the little guys compete. Exactly. And it's not impossible that Cursor AI creates brand new jobs, ones we don't even have yet. Okay, like, w give me some good news here. Think about it, if AI takes over the boring coding jobs, that lets human developers specialize more, do the higher level stuff. We might see way more demand for AI trainers, for example, or developers who focus on building these AI tools. So not just replacing jobs, but shifting what the jobs are. Precisely. Humans and AI working together, each doing what they're best at. That's got huge potential for innovation for the whole economy to grow. Okay feeling a bit more optimistic now. Yeah. But let's zoom out even further. This isn't just a tech industry thing, right? Globally, what could cursor AI mean? You're right. This goes way beyond Silicon Valley. This is tech that could completely change industries, economies, even how countries deal with each other. Whoa. Okay. That's a lot. Where do we even begin? Well, the big one is probably economic competition. The countries leading in AI right now, US, China, they're pouring money into stuff like cursor AI. And there's a reason. They see this as the thing that'll drive their economies, make them powerful globally in the 21st century. So it's like a new arms race, but with algorithms instead of weapons. Kind of, yeah. And like any other valuable resource, having the best AI could cause conflict between countries, new alliances, new rivalries. Okay, so big impact on global power. What about just regular people? How do we make sure everyone benefits fairly all over the world from AI? That's the tough question, and there are no easy answers. But one thing's for sure, we got to start thinking about this now, not later. Invest in education, training, so people have the skills to thrive in this AI-powered world that's coming. We need policies that make sure everyone has a fair shot at using these technologies. And globally, Countries have to work together to face these challenges and opportunities AI brings. That's a lot to take on. We've talked about the potential of cursor AI, the challenges, the effects on the economy, the global impact, a lot to process. It is, and we're just scratching the surface, really. But hopefully this gives you a better sense of what cursor AI is, why it matters, and what's at stake as this technology keeps changing. Definitely a lot of info coming at you today, but we don't want you to feel overwhelmed or worse, like there's no hope. Because while there are things to be concerned about, there's also a ton of reasons to be optimistic. So where do we go from here? What do you recommend for navigating this whole, I don't know, brave new world of AI and development? Well, to start, I think it's crucial to really embrace this idea of lifelong learning. The tech landscape is changing so rapidly, it's hard to keep up. True, the learning curve is steep. But tools like Cursor AI, they can actually help us with that. So not a threat, but a way to level up our own skills. Exactly. Use these tools, figure out how they work, experiment, and don't be afraid to really see what they can do. Like that saying, if you can't beat them, join them. Although in this case, it's more like if you can't beat them, learn their secrets and build something even cooler. That's the spirit. And for businesses listening, my advice, be bold, be ready to adapt, 
and invest in the future. Because AI is not going away anytime soon, is it? Not a chance. This is a fundamental shift, how we interact with technology, and it's only going to get bigger from here. So whether you're a coding pro, just interested in tech, or even just someone who uses software every day, pay attention. Cursor AI is just one example of what's happening in the world of AI. We've talked about the potential, the challenges, how it could even change things globally. But now, we want to hear from you. What really stood out to you today? What about Cursor AI got you thinking, good or bad? Find us on social media. Let us know. We want to keep this conversation going because what happens with AI is something we're all figuring out together. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep diving deep. See you next time.